Hello and welcome to another episode of Matt's Cigars and Whiskies. Now in this episode, first one of 2022, I thought I'd do a whiskey that's not very readily available to be honest with you. I know a lot of you out there like to watch the videos about the whiskies that you can buy on the general market, but sometimes you know there are whiskies that you try and even though they are limited runs that people might not be able to get a hold of, um, you just feel like you have to do a review on them just to give the distillery a bit of a thank you and a well done for what they're producing. Now, this is the English St. George's Distillery from Norfolk, the English Whiskey Company. Now, it was called the St. George's uh, Distillery, but I believe there was another company in America that was called St. George's. They kicked up a fuss, so they changed their name to the English Whiskey Company. Producing some fantastic whiskey. A lot of people don't know this whiskey and uh, distillery exists. They're now flourishing on the market. Everything I've tried from them is uh, superb. Back in August, I went on a distillery tour for my birthday with my missus. Whilst there, they had this one here, which is an 11 year old cask strength, single cask release coming in at 56.8%. Now it's second fill ASB, American Standard Barrels, which is second fill bourbon basically, I believe. Um, lovely bottling, bottled in or date filled 2008, that was in the cask, bottled January 2020, number of bottles 207. Now like I say, obviously it's not one that's readily available, I was at the distillery the other day and I think they had a couple of bottles of this left, should have got myself another one, didn't bother, unfortunately but I've been taking a little bit of time to get to notice getting stuck into it and you know the more I drank it the more I thought I've got to do a video on it just to show what they're producing and show how good the whiskies are. Now they have got some core ranges, they have a smoky, they have an original. I will be getting my hands on them very soon. I will be doing some reviews on them because I went to a distillery visit just after Christmas and the people I went with, my girlfriend, my brother-in-law, and my girlfriend's dad, um, they not in, they're not into whiskey very much, but they both bought a bottle of the original, so I will be nicking the bottle off them to do a review at some point. Now let's get in to the whiskey. Like I say, it is 11 years old, it is 56.8%. Now all I will say about this is, the viscosity of this whiskey is ab absolutely phenomenal it clings to the glass it hangs on the glass you can see at the top where the actual waves of whiskey have hit it is just slowly oozing down the side of the glass it is just you can just see from that how how it sat in those that cast for 11 years and how much viscosity it's actually picked up now like i say it's asb american standard uh, barrels it's going to pick quite a lot of vanilla up from them. We'll go into the nose in a minute. But it's interesting to me to see what else comes from within this whiskey. So shall we take this on the nose and let's see what we actually get from this. Now, nose in this, first thing I get from this is I'm getting baked apples. I'm getting sultanas. Brown sugar in a pan. When you put the baked apples in, you know, my grandma used to do the baked apples in there, sultanas on top, brown sugar on top of that, and you bake them and you sort of, you get the stewed soft apple with a bubbling around it with the caramel. That is what I'm getting from this. There's a vanilla in there as well, but there's also a butteriness to the vanilla, like a cakey. I would say when I'm, when I'm nosing this, Alcohol soaked vanilla brioche, you know, the brioche, the lovely cakey brioche, but it's been soaked in a little bit of alcohol because you can smell there's a little bit of spiciness on there. Definitely not a young spirit spiciness, more like a cooking spice. Pears and syrup as well. It's quite fruity. What is going on in the back of this is quite fruity. But what I would say, it's quite a busy nosing. <clears throat> it's quite complex. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. There's a spicy pinch at the back, like I say. 
which is like a nutmeggy, cinnamony type spice. It's like I say, it's a very sweet, spicy, fruity nose on this. Which, you know, from an 11 year old car strength, you're not getting any alcohol burn coming across the nose, you're not getting any of that nastiness within there, which you know you, you sometimes get from a, a fairly high cast. Not nastiness, like a you know, sometimes you get a bit of a burn off the high cast strength, but this is coming across silky, you know. It, it is lovely, it really is. So, the nose from this is fantastic, you know. I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, I was drinking some bourbon with my missus. A few days ago, and I poured myself one of these, like I say, I've been dipping in and out of it, just getting to know it. Not pouring big glasses, just a little bit every now and then. And she asked for a sip of this. And 56.8% uh, <laughs> whiskey is not a good whiskey to give to someone who's only just started on their journey. Um, I'm hoping to bring her and some various others into videos very soon. I've got quite a lot planned for this year with the whiskies and also the cigars. Was going to do a cigar video today, uh, but I don't smoke in my flat, in my home. Um, I like to keep it smelling nice within here and it's windy and it's raining outside, so I'm not gonna do that. But anyway, let's take this on the palette now and let's see where we go. Lovely, that is beautiful. That is beautiful, there's initial spiciness on that. There is an initial spiciness coming through on that, 56.8%. You'd expect there to be a spiciness, but as soon as that spiciness goes, you're left with an absolutely delish, delicious vanilla taste. But whereas it was vanilla, buttered brioche, alcohol soaked brioche within the nose, this turns into sweet vanilla crowns. The Danish pastries, I love them. I pick it up every now and then in whiskies, but this whiskey in particular, that initial taste from that. Like I say, it's it's just buttery, it's pastry, it's vanilla in there as well. I could just imagine while I sip this, the vanilla crowns are absolutely delicious. But once you go through the vanilla and the spiciness, you come through to red juicy apples. There's a fruitiness that appears behind the vanilla. You know, obviously the vanilla is a slight cask influence, but beyond that, red juicy apples do appear come through. It is slightly dry, slightly oaky, not gonna lie to you. 11 years within a cask, it is gonna pick up some of that oakiness. It's not a nasty dry, it's fairly juicy. Like I say, the apples do come through and give it that juiciness, but you can definitely taste the oak within the back of that. But so far, it's a phenomenal liquid. It really, really is. And underneath all that, you have red berries, like a current, like red currants sort of just floating around underneath it, giving you that juiciness in the background. Now, what I will say is it is super oily. I don't know if you can see while I'm, I'm actually smacking my lips because it is, it is almost like I'm chewing through the flavors. It is that oily. Coats the mouth, coats the tongue, coats the throat on the way down. It's a phenomenal liquid. It really, really is. Now, the English Whiskey Co, they seem to produce, I've got some, quite a few of them up there. Uh, they seem to produce a lot of single cast releases that you can get sometimes online. A lot of them are within the distillery as well. Obviously, go on their website, take a look. By the way, I'm not affiliated in any way, shape or form with this distillery. I'm just, I've now visited it twice. I've been with my family a couple of times. I'm just growing I think everyone has a distillery that they becomes a part of them. And to me, the English whiskey company is like, you know, that is becoming my go-to distillery. Yeah, the liquid they produce, like I say, is phenomenal. And just, even if you get to go on a distillery tour, the people are fantastic. The place in itself is brilliant. And also they have a, a very nice cafe there that does the best homemade scones my missus says she's ever tasted. But back to the uh, whiskey, I digress. Phenomenal liquid. It would be nice if they could actually do a cask strength single batch and put it on the general market. Now I know they're doing it within the distillery where you go and buy these. 
But I personally think if they produce something along these lines, and they, not even a single cast, just like a small batch release, um, like this, I think it would fly. I think people would get their hands on it, people would try it, and I really do think it would fly off the shelves. But yeah, let's go back to the whiskey. Right, anyway, back to the finish. The finish on this is very long. I can still taste it in my mouth. As you can see, while I'm talking, I'm still smacking my lips, smacking within the mouth. My tongue's rolling around. It's just, it's just holding within my mouth. And the main flavour for this is it's juicy fruits. You get the initial currants, and then as it all moves off, you get left with red apples. And the vanilla brioche comes back. Whereas before it turned into vanilla crowns, as the finish moves away, you get brioche, you get buttery, cakey, vanillaness in your mouth. Obviously the oak is always there. The oak is still sitting there, swirling around around it. It is there, it is a, it's not at the forefront, it's just sitting at the back of the whiskey itself. But it's phenomenal. I'm not gonna give it a mark out of 10 because I'd only do that really if it's a whiskey that's readily available. All I would say is, they are producing some amazing stuff. They really are. So, you know, check out the small batch releases on their website. Check out the core range, which is the original and the smoky. And if you're ever in Norfolk or anywhere near there, or even if you just fancy, you know, the distillery in itself is in a beautiful, beautiful bit of countryside, you know. There's plenty you can do from there. You can go to Norwich, you can go to Ipswich, you can go to Bury St. Edmunds. You can visit the seaside from there. You have places... A little bit of a drive, don't get me wrong, but you have Aldbury, you have Cromer the other way. You have Sheringham, you have Great Yarmouth. They're all within that curve of East Anglia, all where near where this sits. So if you get the chance, go and visit the distillery, do the tour, have a look at the whiskey. Beautiful bottle, you know, what an absolute stunner. I think, I was chatting to my missus last night, I know they had a couple of bottles, I think I'm going to have to go and visit there within the next couple of weeks just to try and get one more of these just to keep because it is such an amazing, beautiful liquid. It really is. Right, anyway, that's enough of that. English Whiskey Company, check them out. I will leave that there. Have a great 2022. No doubt I will see you within the on the channel next week. Um, I think I'm going to be, well, I am going to be trying to promote produce videos weekly now maybe even two a week depending on if i do like a hot sauce or something like that because i do do little things like that on the side as well got some rums coming got cigars coming my humidor has been sitting there i've been putting cigars in the humidor um, but obviously i haven't really been doing any videos on them so i've got some cubans in there some nice new worlds as well they've had some time you know they've settled great videos coming i've also got some very nice whiskies to come i've got some uh Supermarket bottlings, I've also got some other ones which are readily available but not like you'll find in the supermarket. So anyway, you take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next review.